Well, hey, everybody, I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. One of the most common questions that I get is whether alcohol is good for us, good for our brains, or toxic to the body and toxic to the brain. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down the science and the nuance and what we know about whether alcohol is something we should absolutely avoid or something that we should be consuming each day as it relates to overall health and especially brain health. For background here, chances are that you have consumed alcohol at some point in your life. And if you haven't yet, chances are good that you will. People tend to use alcohol and they have used alcohol for thousands of years. There's actually evidence that humans have consumed alcohol for 10,000 years. Now, the very basic consumption of alcohol has been pretty consistent, but what we haven't seen as far as consistency is the amount of debate as to whether alcohol is bad for our health. Uh, we have seen some of the moral considerations about alcohol for some time, but in the last hundred years, we've seen an ongoing debate over whether alcohol is a morally bad idea and whether it is something that is bad for our health. And you can see this conversation across social media, across the news. There is this active, passionate debate over whether alcohol is the worst thing for the world or whether alcohol is part of what it is to live. It helps people to connect socially and may even have benefits. So there's a lot of conversation in particular about alcohol being part of the Mediterranean pattern diet, containing molecules like resveratrol that lead to positive health outcomes. So again, we're gonna get into all of that science. We're gonna talk a little bit about kind of the cultural background to this. And we're gonna talk about as far as we know right now, what does the research tell us as to whether we should avoid alcohol? And if we are going to consume alcohol, how much is safe and or beneficial? So again, putting this into the context of culture, we have used alcohol as a human society for at least 10,000 years. Alcohol has a significant role in religious and cultural ceremonies. It's very big in multiple religions. I know that when I was in uh, religious uh, ceremonies over the years, alcohol was always a part of this, even if it was a non-alcoholic version of alcohol uh, to kind of give you the taste of what it would be when you were an adult. And I'm not trying to talk here about the relative value of those ceremonies. What I am trying to say is that alcohol has been a part of human culture for a long, long time. Now, in the modern day, we have been willing to question many things that we maybe weren't in the past. And one of the pieces of this questioning is whether alcohol itself independent of any cultural significance is actually bad for our health. So let's talk about what it does in particular in the brain. What does alcohol do in the brain? This is really where you get the majority of the kind of effects of alcohol. And arguably this is the main reason why people consume alcohol to the extent in which they feel something. Alcohol, and here I should clarify, we're talking about ethanol. There are many different forms of alcohol. When we're talking about drinking alcohol, we're talking really about the effects of ethanol. Alcohol, obviously directly impacts brain function. It is classified as a depressant because it has a slowing effect on our brain because it activates GABA pathways. When a person consumes alcohol, and as people who have consumed alcohol know, it tends to lead to uh, uninhibited behavior. We may have worse or different judgment about what is important, and we have impairment in motor function. Now, all of this kind of comes together to help us understand why we don't want people who are intoxicated behind the wheel of a car because motor reflexes are slowed and decision making is impaired. This is also one of the big reasons why many countries have limitations on the age at which you're allowed to start drinking. So this is at the lower level. What happens at the higher level? If a person consumes high levels of alcohol over a short period of time, this can actually lead to an incredible risk for a variety of health complications up into including coma and death. Again, because alcohol can actually suppress, can kind of uh, slow the brain to the extent that a person can actually die as a reflection of consuming uh, excess alcohol. So let's talk about the brain damaging effects of excess alcohol on our bodies. It is probably the least debated, maybe after a couple of things like cigarettes, uh, pieces of medicine that excess alcohol consumption can lead to, can cause certain diseases. 
Um, so this isn't just necessarily an association where we say, oh, well, people who tend to drink a lot of alcohol have higher rates of, let's say, liver disease. It is believed that the alcohol consumption directly causes liver disease. And so excess alcohol consumption we're talking about high risk for disease in the heart, in the pancreas, in the liver, and in the brain. And we even see this uh, to the brains of children in utero when moms are consuming high amounts of alcohol. As it relates to just death, about one in eight deaths in American adults is attributable to alcohol use. And when we look specifically at the brain, we know that alcohol can lead to everything from confusion, as I've already mentioned, to a much higher risk for dementia. So with this said, the clarifying point here that many people will always ask is, okay, so you're saying that high levels of alcohol consumption are incredibly dangerous to our health. And yes, I am saying that, but how do we actually clarify what is excessive? What is high alcohol use? There are various groups in multiple countries that define what is excess or high amounts of alcohol. In general, it would be something around four or more alcoholic drinks, and you can look at kind of equivalencies as far as what the alcohol consumption uh, is in these various drinks. Again, we're, we're talking about ethanol here in particular, um, but it's about four drinks for women on one occasion or five or more for men. If you look at a longer period of time, it's actually eight drinks a week for women or 15 or more a week for men. And if you look at other risk behaviors, it's drinking any amount of alcohol if you are pregnant and any amount of alcohol if you're younger than age 21. So that's really more United States specific. That's the legal drinking age. Now, I do want to clarify here. This doesn't mean it's safe if you drink less than this on a given day. This is just the point at which we would say that's really concerning. And one of the things that I think about a good amount is specific to college days where drinking was seen as a really uh, reasonable thing to do as a social lubricant and also excess drinking was so normalized. And some of the things that were very common that I have experienced is drinking to the point where your memory gets a little fuzzy. The next step past that is something like a brownout or a blackout where you literally block out periods of memory or potentially pass out from drinking. These are terms, these are things that many of you know well this is pretty significant evidence that the amount of alcohol you're consuming is creating problems in your brain. And I think this is really important. We also know from some other data that being hung over actually may be a risk factor because being hung over correlates with higher levels of inflammation in the bloodstream. Why that's important is that one of the pathways that links alcohol consumption with higher risk for disease is by the increase in inflammation in our bodies and in our brain. One other point I'll make here is alcohol use disorder, more commonly known as alcoholism, is a risk factor for the brain. People who are alcoholics uh, are at a much higher risk for developing dementia, as well as early uh, onset dementia, which is important. So not only are they getting dementia, but they are getting dementia early. So then the question is, okay, we've talked about high levels, we've talked about excess amounts of alcohol. Is there a safe amount of alcohol that can be used, uh, especially for the brain? There have been several studies that look at this question. Probably the most significant as it relates to the press that it got was a study that came out in Nature Communications where they were looking at brain imaging from about 37,000 middle-aged to older adults. And they were comparing brain scans to the amount of alcohol that these people said they consumed. What did they find in this study? Well, what they found is that people's alcohol consumption correlated with a smaller brain, meaning more alcohol consumption correlated with more brain atrophy, a smaller brain. And this was significant even for people who were saying they were only having one or two drinks a day. So this was seen as evidence that any amount of alcohol is a risk factor for the brain. But I do want to couch that in saying that there is data suggesting uh, from some research that drinking some alcohol may actually decrease risk for, de uh, for dementia. So this is uh, data that comes from, for example, a 2022 study in 27,000 people. And they showed that the consumption of up to 40 grams of alcohol a day, that is about 2.5 standard drinks, was actually linked to a lower risk for dementia versus abstinence from alcohol. And this is in adults over age 60. There's another study that came out 
that looked at about 4 million people, specifically people in Korea, finding that mild to moderate alcohol consumption was linked to a lower risk for dementia compared to people who were non-drinkers. There are several considerations here around confounding, uh, around whether people who drink alcohol have other habits, whether people who are abstinent have other habits. But what we do think based on this is that there is great data telling us that heavy or excess use of alcohol is a risk factor for the brain, whereas smaller amounts of alcohol may actually not be as concerning. So let me kind of put all of this together for you. And before I do this, I want to make one point clear. At no point in this am I going to advocate that a person should start drinking for brain benefits. I think that's really important. There are a number of risks with alcohol consumption that we can't necessarily predict. Some people have a genetic or other predisposition to alcoholism. So introducing them to a known addictive substance for potential brain benefits is not a good idea. In addition, we do know from cell data that alcohol is a potential neurotoxin. That doesn't necessarily mean that at scale in real humans, that is a risk, but it's enough for me to think that it isn't a good plan to consume alcohol if a person's not already consuming alcohol for brain benefits. So let's go over some of the key bullets, some of the take homes as it relates to what do we know about alcohol and brain health in particular. As I said, and as I'll say again, Consuming heavy or excessive alcohol amounts is a risk factor, is a danger for the brain. These are things that are correlated with higher risk for mood disorders, higher risk for cognitive issues, higher risk for the development of dementia in addition to uh, lower level cognitive issues. So heavy or excessive alcohol consumption, as I've already uh, discussed, it's a little different depending on whether you're a man or a woman. But I would say one of the keys here is if you are experiencing a blackout, a brownout, anything in between, that is a signal that the amount of alcohol you're consuming is putting your brain at risk. Point number two would be that alcohol use disorder or alcoholism is a risk factor for dementia. So that is kind of a known thing. There's not a whole lot of debate. If a person has a risk for alcoholism or are experiencing alcoholism, that is a risk factor for the development of dementia. As we look at the other end of the spectrum, meaning mild to moderate alcohol consumption, somewhere in the order of one to three drinks a day, it doesn't seem like we have a ton of data suggesting that this is a risk. And even some data suggests that this is a positive, meaning people who consume this amount of alcohol may have brain benefits. But let's get into this for just a second here. Some people discuss alcohol as a way to get nutrients like polyphenols, resveratrol being the most significant and most popular example. There are many sources of polyphenols that do not necessitate the consumption of alcohol. And actually coffee, for example, is an amazing way to get those polyphenols or tea or spices without taking on the alcohol. Another consideration is how we consume alcohol. So alcohol consumed in the context of, let's say, a glass of red wine, which does have some of those polyphenols, may be far less concerning to the brain than consuming a mixed drink that has added sugar. We know that sugar-sweetened beverages are a known risk factor for the development of dementia, for the development of mood disorders. So the way in which we consume alcohol also seems to be important. And the other thing I'll say here is, there are these other variables, again, around whether people who consume alcohol or don't consume alcohol have other tendencies that can maybe confuse or confound some of these data points. Last thing I'll say on this front, there has been some suggestion that alcohol can actually act as a positive, what's called hormetic stressor, that it may actually help to augment in a positive way longevity pathways and other kind of anti-inflammatory pathways throughout the body and in the brain. I think that is an interesting idea, but from what I've seen so far, we shouldn't over-index towards it being beneficial in that way. I think something like exercise has an obvious positive hormetic effect. Alcohol, we're not sure, and it seems like kind of good cover to be able to let us say we want our alcohol. So to put all of this together here at the very end, what I would say is we have good data suggesting that consumption of high levels of alcohol is a bad plan for your brain. If you're experiencing brain symptoms that are related to alcohol consumption, that should be taken seriously. If you're consuming a small amount of alcohol, a glass of wine or two here and there, 
and you are doing so again in moderation, there's not a lot of good data suggesting that that is a bad plan for your brain health. But if you're not consuming alcohol, it is probably not a good idea to start consuming alcohol simply to protect and boost your brain. If this is interesting to you at all, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like the full length article that was based on this video, you can check out my article on my website. I'll drop the link below. Thanks for watching.